afternoon, cherubs. Right, so um, I'm not going to be on for ages and ages today because I know you're all very excited about tonight's live with the lovely Seth. Um, so we're just going to cover a couple of bits today and I have been given a challenge for today and it's not at all because my mind just wasn't working so I actually really needed one but it's not a naughty challenge because obviously I'm not naughty like that Lynette which I'm, you know, I'm not, oh I tell you what I am a bit naughty because I left my ping pongers on let me just turn them off tiddly ping pong here we go. Um, so the challenge I have been given is to, is, was, for, <laughs> sorry, I can't speak because I was trying to do two things at once. Shouldn't do that, should I? Um, was by Julia and she was giving me a challenge. Um, for, and the, basically it was one word. Okay. It was ombre. Ombre. That is my challenge. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to be doing ombre fantastical alrighty so ombre is actually a french word and it's everywhere at the minute hi angie hi jane i was gonna say when you get here give me a thumbs up or something so i know you're here um ombre is actually yeah so i'm, I'm just gonna keep going because i can see more people coming in so ombre is my challenge for today now ombre is a french word okay that literally means shaded okay that's what it means Okay, um, but basically, oh, that was Sammy. Ombre is is shading from traditionally from a lighter tone to a darker one. That's generally so it's a blending of of tone generally. And obviously, we a lot of us use this in craft quite a lot um, in terms of blending inks and all this sort of thing. So the ombre is the challenge for today. So I'm going to be doing some of that. I'm going to do some with inks and paint and whatever. Now, for example, Julia's um, live yesterday, she really focused on technique and doing that sort of thing. And like I, I did last week as well. And I think that's really, really useful sometimes. So that's what we're going to do. We may or may not get something finished. Um, so I'm going to do, it is a tidy desk, Sarah Lou. It was not an hour ago. I sent a picture to the admins and let me just say Louise Sims was horrified because um, so, <laughs> after my last night's live on, on mine last night, I, I just sort of walked away and then had to sort it today. Not hombre, ombre. As in the French word for shaded, ombre. O-M-B-R-E. O-M-B-R-E, yeah. Um, with an accent over the E. Now, um... With ombre, um, there is also sombre, okay, which is a much softer version. And um, it's a much more gentle grade and tends to be in softer tones anyway. You don't really get to that harsh, darker tone. So there you go. Sombre and ombre. So let me just push these to the side. So we're going to work on some, some tags because it means I can show you quickly different colours. So if I was doing sort of like an ombre effect on which is basically your light to dark. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go with. I would pick out three tones that I think go from light to dark. I'm actually gonna change that up. And I'm gonna go, do, 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 do. Okay, so you can see those three tones there. We're, gonna, we're just gonna start with one color, but different tones to start with. All right, so Michaela, yeah, sorry, darling. These are our these are our blending mats, yeah, um, which are, are erased because the color sits on top, and because it's a pale color, because it's white, well, sort of, it's an off white. That's white. Um, you can you can see the colors properly, and that's why I don't blend on my nonstick craft sheet. I blend on my blending mat so I can see the colors better. Um, right hi gail hi Anne marie right so we are doing we're doing ombre toning so i'm just going to take these off my distressing so yeah i'm using weathered wood salty ocean chipped sapphire but you know you can go into your collection see which ones you have and work that way okay i know i know not everybody's got oh, every color because there's sublimin many now um so we're just gonna so what i'm gonna do is i like to go light to dark and the reason for that is you can make something darker. If you go too dark at the beginning, making it lighter is more of an issue. Okay. So we're going to go in. So I'm just using my regular distress. 
And I'm going to go in. Oh, that's I've used a dirty foam, I think. So that's a bit darker than I'd planned. But oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. So we're going to. I'm just going to put that, and we're going to go about a third of the way along the tag. Okay. And then I'm going to go into my salty ocean. And actually, I'm going to start above the seam, for want of a better description, and then blend down over it. And add a little bit more in. Okay, and then go to Chip Sapphire, turn my tag around. And then we're going to add in the Chip Sapphire. I'm going to blend. Now, dirty fingerprints. What a lot of people like to do if they don't like dirty fingerprints is once you have blended, because you can see my fingerprint there. I don't know if you can actually see my fingerprint there. What you can do is get a piece of card and put it on where you're holding your tag. And then you don't get dirty fingerprints. Now, anybody that has seen me do blending before or lots of inky things, no, this is obviously not something I do often because everything has dirty fingerprints on it. Maybe if I did, it wouldn't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work that chip sapphire down a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my salty ocean and go over the, the middle line, if you want. And then just work that down. Work over that fingerprint, get it out of the way. And work it down. So there is your sort of ombre effect with your chip sapphire working all the way down to the weathered wood that's there. Now in fairness, if you wanted to fade this out to white, I, I would start with your middle tone. So I'll go to your salty ocean, for example, and I'll start in the middle of your tag and then work out. So for example, if you have got, if you, if you have only got a few, a few ink pads, a few distress that you're starting with, you can do this with one. So we'll just do this with a salty ocean. Okay. So we're going to work through the middle and then just work to the end of the tag and then back to the middle to build up that color here and then out to the end of the tag. And I'm going to turn it around and not try and get ink off the lid because that's not going to work, is it? So we're going to get some more ink off the lid here. And again, I've got my spare piece of card because we're going to really build up some of this colour. Or you could even go, if you wanted to, put some direct from ink pad on and then blend from there. And that way you've got a really nice intense colour to start with. And then we're just going to Blend it down and just keep adding to get that tonal change. So you can see, go over that bit a little. So even with one distressing colour, you can really get that tonal change all the way down. Okay. So that's with three colours, that's with one. So it's just a different way of doing it. All right. But you can also get these sort of effects with paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab my non-stick craft sheet. Now I've lost my little brayer. Um, I was because I'm only doing because I'm just working on little tags at the minute. I was looking for my little brayer. Can I find it? I won't say the words I normally use, but no, I cannot. So <laughs> I am going to use my big one. Okay, and some Dilutions paint. So I have got, so this is my acrylic paint. This one isn't open, sorry, just bear with. Bear with. Are we all having a nice day? Have the thunderstorms hit anyone else yet? You've been, my list seems never ending after these lockdown lives. Yeah, but the whole thing is, are you finding it are you finding it useful? That's what the the lives are all for. Finding it useful. And have you found uses for products that you already have too? So what I'm going to use, I have got the 
rose quartz, the tropical sangria, and then the post box red. Okay. So I'm going to put. I'm not going to put a dot on because I haven't taken the thing out. Take that out. Okay. I'm going to put some post box red. Tropical sangria and some rose quartz. Okay, so you can see the three dots there. There, and then I'm just going to work my brayer, work it up and down a little bit. And then, when you go onto your tag, you get that sort of ombre effect. Now, I would just use a brush here. I've done a bit too much just to fade that in. Again, if you haven't got a brayer, you can do this with a brush too. And just fade it down. Oh, this is so pretty. I'm so pleased with it. And again, the nice thing with paint, I would say, is if you were getting this sort of ombre effect. I'm not going to get tired of saying that today. It's kind of like me yesterday with Julia. Shiny! I've been doing it all morning. Driving my kids nuts. Right. So, you know, you can see there that lovely fade all the way down. Okay. Absolutely lovely. I like that a lot. But, yeah, with your paints... Okay, so if you're doing it with your paints and you're... And with the brayer then for example some of the red went up and I got my brush in to fix it if you are worried about that you can always get some oh that was a bit too much that sort of ran out then you can always get some white acrylic my brayer stopped rolling that's all right all right so we'll... there we go there we go and then you could add some white to it to spread it out a little bit more. And then and there's another way as well of stretching out the paint that you've already got on your mat. It needs a bit more red there, doesn't it? So we'll take some more of that post box red and then just work it up into the paint that's there. Get more of the white there and just get that moving. And again, and then just almost do the other th the other way with the white. If you wanted it paler this end, just add in a bit more white and then work your way down there. So a great way to do backgrounds and and and, and 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 set up your pages so because you could do that with your journaling pages you can do it with you know with your cards your mixed media projects your canvases okay have i got a canvas i don't have a not started canvas but i can okay so here's one I'm going to use the same colours because this is what I've got out. So let me just move those tags to the side. So, hello! Oh, Rosie, sorry, I'm late. Don't worry, my darling, we are doing ombre colouring. So I am just going to go to... So this is a canvas that, I've got to be honest, I, use, I made... Um, I put texture paste on. Well, it wasn't texture paste, it was polyfiller. And I've got to be honest, it's been sat on my shelf for ages. So what we'll do is we are going to do... Some of the technique we've just done, we're going to use this paint a little bit more of, and I might put a little bit more white on as well. And what we'll do is we'll cover the canvas. Sorry, I'll move my water over here so I stop reaching across you. In my defence, I don't usually have any desk spare over here. <laughs> right, let me just dry that brush off a little bit. Okay. 
any particular acrylics are best with the brayer um in all honesty darling it's not something i do a lot i, I use dilutions i've also got some um pbo studio acrylics as well um so in terms of what's best i don't really know because i just use the acrylics i like in all honest so i use like i say i use the dilutions i've got some fab pbo ones that are metallic as well um so yeah they're just the ones i have right so we're gonna go on i'll we'll do the edges in a minute okay so i'm gonna go i'm actually gonna go a quarter of the way up the canvas with the post box red okay oh i'll tell you what that is a nice color this is the problem you see with my dilutions paints i tend to use them um, dry brush them or use them in small so I don't usually see them spread out on such a large area oh it's right nice so without cleaning my brush anything that means I don't have to clean my brushes you know you know I'm going to be down with I should yeah like I say I sent Lou Sims a picture of my desk earlier well I sent all the admins and Louise was horrified and um she's she's a good girl and cleans up after every project I was like, I don't even know how. Right, so I'm going to work the tropical sangria in. Okay. Okay, so you can see. And yes, I have gone dark to light, which is specifically what I said I don't do. But you know, here we are. <laughs> I'm committed now. So this is what we're going to do. So yeah, I'm just going to go in. Obviously, I have made my life slightly more difficult because this is i've already got um texture paste on here through templates so i'm going to need a little bit more i think of the tropical sangria not the tropical sangria the yeah the tropical sangria because i feel i'm not really getting that vivid that vivid bit of pink that i want oh yes there we go and we have sort of gone past our quarter there so that's fine We'll add that in this is what's great about doing the lives for us too i will say um we we absolutely love doing them it's kept us going as well and ticking over and we're absolutely loving them and i'm and, and the lovely thing about being in crafting together all brands is i can just grab whatever i want do you know what i mean because it's not for a show or a specific thing it's just oh i'll have a play with that today and that's what we like so i'm just going to go over that there because that was a bit of a harsh line okay so now i'm going to turn it around so you can really see now the dark going into the light and i've got some of my rose quartz here i actually might take a little bit of color off my brush there we go I'll get me rose quartz and again i'm going to start here and then work the blend into here just getting in between all those don't worry about things like that we can sort that out after you, but you do want to get in the gaps because you don't want to get finished put all your paint away and go i missed that white bit that being said i would just stick something over the top so it's not really a major deal but I love having little canvases to play with. And like I say, this one's had the um, the embossing, the texture paste on it for, oh, it's got to at least be a year. I'm not even lying. It's got to be a year. So we'll take that there. Look at the rose quartz. Okay. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get in I'm going to get a little bit more of that white acrylic, um, which I think, I've got to be honest, I think this is just one from the works or something. It's quite runny, so I would say so. Um, but it's all right for mixing. I don't know where my dil Dilusions white's gone, so it's fine. It's fine for mixing. Better do the edges now, Mumsy. I was doing the edges. Look. Don't need to do much to get told off around here, do you? Right, so and then I'm going to pull some more white in. Put that at the edge. And then go 
around that edge there. So yeah, I mean, I have to say, I'm not going to lie to you. Why would I? When um, Dilu, when um, Julia said to me, she was like, "Oh, ombre," and I was like, "Okay, I'm not really sure how this is going to go." But if you think about it, it is everywhere at the minute. I mean, obviously, the hair people are people are having ombre hair. Well, probably not so much at the minute, I suppose. But you know, with the darker tones at the bottom uh, the lighter tone sorry at the bottom working to the dark at the top but you know you can see it on you know if you're on facebook which you obviously are um you know you see it in like the cake making videos um all the nail art stuff it's really and i think it is because it's such a lovely look um but yeah, so in answer, in answer to the lady um, about the acrylics I like to use, I like to do use dilutions mainly because it dries quick, it's great. Okay, so let me just, I don't, I can't put that anywhere, I'm not even going to pretend. So, <clears throat> you've got, so that's your paints, so you can see, it's just lovely, and you're looking at it and you're like, right, I can see how I'm going to, you know, add stuff onto that, layer it up. This is a canvas that I had abandoned because I had no idea where to go next. Now I know where to go next. There's there's things I want to add. Um, and I'm not going to tell you because it's a surprise. Okay. I'm just going to... Where's me? Microfiber. I just want to brush some of the edges out there it's a nice soft brush now if you wanted to you could go over you know with some gilding waxes or even dry brush white over these texture bits but i actually quite like it i think it's a way of really bringing it your hair is ombre but gray at the top i have ombre hair too which is gray at the top but because i'm sort of strawberry blondie you can't really see it my husband can. He tells me about it all the time. Um, so we've got that. Lynette is really naughty. She messaged me in bed. Yes, she did. And she used a rude word. She's so naughty. That Lynette. Okay. Um, just an FYI, everyone, we have a big lightning storm forecast in the next little while. My geekometer, that's Sammy then, um, tells me the lightning is approximately 10 miles away. Okay. <clears throat> so, I basically crack on, Beverly, is what my sister's saying to me. Um, by the way, everybody do a thumbs up if you think Sam should do a live soon. Yeah, man. Come on, thumbs up. Lots of them. Loads of them. Everybody do one. Everybody do five, actually. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Look, it's a rainbow of thumbs up. A multitude, a plethora, if you will. Lots of thumbs up for Sam to do a live soon. Absolutely ace. Um, so we've got those and we've got the Distress Ink tags in the blues okay but i think you can see on the canvas as well this is the i thought oh i'll do it on tags but you, on i think on a on a on a larger area you can really see uh, that, it, that it's luscious right so i'm going to move this out of the way because what i'm thinking is um hang on, my brain nearly fell off and i don't want to lose that one as i've already lost the little one um, was sort of like an ombre stamping. You know, do some ombre stamping. I think that sounds ace. So I'm just going to quickly. Oh, should we do some ombre templating as well? I think that's a good idea. Or shall we use that one? We'll use that one. Ombre stamping and ombre templating. This is going to be my new favourite word. I can feel it. Ombre. But if you do. Oh, look at all them thumbs up, Sammy. Oh, check them out. Check them out. Okay. So at the beginning, sorry guys, I know a lot of you have come in um, as well. So at the beginning, basically the ombre was a challenge set to me by Julia today. 
Um, so it's actually a French word, French word that literally means shaded, okay? And traditionally what it is, it's a light to dark tone, like you've just seen on the canvas, okay? There is also an alternative, and it's called a sombre, uh, which is a much, much softer tone from light to dark, okay? So there is ombre and sombre, okay? So there you go um so should we go back to the blues or should we do something a little bit different why don't we like i say traditionally it is um a change in tone generally of the same color but what we're going to do is we're going to mix colors so i think for example if we go a broken china then with the peacock feathers, you could always also use, for example, like an evergreen bow or something like that to the lucky clover. OK, then that will take you all the way through a light and then a blue green mix to the blue. OK, so we're not it's not just one colour to one because we are getting darker as well. So that's the way I'm mixing it up. Another good one would be pine needles because pine needles is a greeny blue. Okay, it's on the blue side of the colour wheel. So I'm just going to go in with the broken china again, about a third of the way down ish. And then peacock feathers. I just want to make sure I've got quite a bit of that in. And again, I start further down than the join, okay? And we want this to be more intense, much stronger, because we're going from a lighter tone to a darker tone, not just changing the colour, okay? And then I'm going to go for a lucky clover. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up the way, okay? So we get that lucky clover really rich and intense down here, and then blend it up into the peacock feathers okay and then you have sort of an ombre through your templates as well okay which is really really wicked okay this is the stencil Alison this is one of our inkables big ones they're they're big so they're big ones Lynette and Charmaine behave yourself just because I've said big one they're Right, so you can see, you know, use them through your templates. And this is a, a way I sometimes get away with not doing white space or doing clean and simple because I struggle with white space, but I like clean and simple. So putting something like a quite an involved template on, you know, you could, like, for example, put it that way, put a, a strip of something across there, and then you've got a bit of white space to stamp your sentiment on. Um, yeah, I love clean and simple, but I'm really rubbish at white space. I like white space. I'm just rubbish at it. Sam's really good at it. Okay. But by doing it this, I get my inky color. You know, you get that ombre look, but it's still clean and it's still some, it's, it's still clean and easy to put together. Okay. So big one, Jane. Yeah. See, Louise is with me. Louise is with me. She wasn't earlier when my desk was a mess, just saying. Right, so what else can we do? Well, yes, yeah, stamping, but what stamp to choose? That's the problem. Oh, here we go. What's that? An iris. We'll take an iris. And I'll put a pile of stamp blocks there. Here we go. Honestly, anybody that saw my live last night, you'll be like, yeah, she was all over the place. It was a mess. Right, so I'm just going to give this. See, this is why this is why Louise Sims cleans up, you see. So when she, depending on technique, she doesn't have to quickly try and clean her stamp before she does it. Just saying. Your projects don't even know what white space. No, Jane does not know white space. She is not. I just don't think she can. So, what I'll do is, I don't think I've got a piece of card long enough, just here, let me just grab a bigger piece of card. Do, 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 do. That's a 
these are all linen but i think that'll be okay um so we'll use the three colors we were just using okay and we'll do use them on our iris i'm going to turn my cardstock that way because i'll be stamping sideways all right so here's the iris so we'll start with we'll start we will actually go light to dark on this one so i'm going to put my broken china at the top and then i'm going to do my peacock feathers here and then i'm going to do my lucky clover at the bottom okay now because that's been sat before i stamp it i'm just going to breathe on it and then we're going to stamp that down we're going to push little flex push little flex and you've got your iris going down but what you could also do then and I'm going to take a mini mister and the reason I'm choosing a mini mister is because it's a much lighter mist than for example your sprayer that's big droplets or your mister which is sort of halfway in between your mini mister is a really fine mist so we're just going to fine mist that onto the stamp and then I didn't re-ink it you could do if you wanted to if you wanted a really watercolour effect and then You've got that one there as well as your second generation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and be really greedy. We're going to spritz it again and see if we can get a third one. You'll see when I'm doing... Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? You'll see when I'm doing... Once I've misted it... Misted it? Misted it? Yeah. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, I don't flex as much because the water will carry the ink into the groove, so you don't need to worry too much. So, okay, Rutter, it's an inkable's big one. It's abstract circles. Yeah, that's that's like me, Jane. I like it. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Um, why do you do the little flicks? The little flicks. What did I little flick? Why breathe? Okay, so <clears throat> because obviously using three colours and I'm using my minis, it takes a little second to get it all on, right? Now, dis distressing, regular distressing is just a water-based ink, okay? So that means it dries really quickly. So, for want of a better description, my kids call it in the winter huffing your breath because when you know when you can huff your breath in the winter and look like a dragon right so my kids call it huffing your breath so if you just huff your breath over the top it just sort of i'm gonna have to use a word i hate and i'm really sorry because i hate it but it's the only word i can think of at the minute it sort of re-moistens the ink oh disgusting re-moistens the ink so that your image stamps out so that's why I huff my breath. If it takes it, if it takes a minute to think again, you could spritz it with your hey Maggie, woohoo! Um, so you could spritz it. It's you know, I tell you what I'll do. Right, so I'll ink it up again, and then I'll mist it when it's fully loaded with ink, so you can see the difference. How about that? Is that a good idea? Um, little flicks, Louise, really come back and talk. Tell me what you mean, little flicks. Okay. Do you mean the little flex? Oh, little flex. A little flex. I do a little flex of my super skinny. I'm hoping that's what she means. Um, because I'm working on linen card for a start. It's not a particularly big stamp. I do it a lot with my big stamps. But I'm working on linen card, which means you do have a textured surface that you're trying to stamp on. Okay. And by just flexing it just a little, it makes sure you've applied pressure to all the points you need to on your stamp she really had me then little flicks little flex flex does it make it moist see marcia why just why makes it moist hideous right well that's going to annoy me a lot right so this i have just re-inked 
So I'm going to mist it now before we've even stamped it. So this is a fully loaded stamp, as they say. And I'm going to go along with my mister. So you can see it's a really fine mist. I don't know if you can see it on my acrylic block. It's a really fine mist you get from a mini mister. That's why they're so cool. Okay. So that's pretty. And again, you've got that shading. All right. So it is predictive text. Okay. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to cut these out. So that's going to take a bit of time. Well, not that long a time, but it is boring for you guys to watch. And I'm sure you've all got lots of crafty things that you want to complete before seven o'clock tonight when Seth's here. Um, so yeah just a quick recap for anybody that's just joined in um and is thinking of oh is it worth watching from the beginning i'll tell you what we've done and then you can decide okay um i will say as well though just a quick one if you are looking at videos to catch up on julia yesterday did some absolutely beautiful things with miricard now i'm not a fan of miricard but it's some of the, the techniques she did were amazing so if you're looking for something that you know you don't think you'll even believe that one so what we were doing today and what we started with were these tags okay because julia challenged me to do some ombre okay um which is a shading from a light to a dark tone um so I started with distress ink. So this is three distress inks on here. This is just one. This is just salty ocean. And we've worked it out basically. Um, and in fairness, I think just using one tone, if you wanted to do the more sombre, which is a much softer ombre, um, that would be great as well. What we also did, and there goes my brayer, is we used some of the Dilusions paint to create an ombre effect on tags and a canvas just using our brea and then our brush to blend them together okay um so i hope that was helpful and maybe you know i'll go and have a go with this while you're waiting for the lovely seth um and see and show us because we love it keep sharing your makes in the group and if you have any questions or anything anything in particular that you would like to see please let us know because basically we just like playing and we like doing the lives and we like talking to you guys too so if there is anything you've got loads of mirror to use up and it's been in your stash for yonks well there you go go and check out julia's live from yesterday um so thank you very much guys like i say any questions about anything i do or anything um that you would like to see just fire them onto the fire them onto the group it's one of those things it's like teachers always tell the kids you know if you've got a question ask you're not going to be the only one that wants to know the answer okay but also please keep remember to share your makes because we like to see them all right then guys have a fantastic afternoon and uh i'll see you at seven with seth <laughs>